such an honor to be here. Um, I'm going to have James talk a little bit about San Diego 350, we're a climate action organization, and um, then I'll get into some more of the specifics of what we did for the High Water Line project. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for inviting uh, Gene and I today. My name is James Long, and I'm a volunteer with San Diego350.org. And I'm really excited that um, I've only been an active member in 350.org since about August. So a total of seven or eight months. And I'm so excited about this organization because we're all volunteer. And if someone really wants to jump in there and get started, there is so much to do for everybody. So this is an organization we get things done, we meet, we talk to each other, we have teams to do things. So if, if you're really interested in activism, and in, in uh, making difference in the media, I um, please join our club. We're, we're looking for um, lots of good people. And um, as Kath, um, Kath Rogers in the, in the previous um, demonstration, just a brief um, a meeting of our name. We're, we're called San Diego 350, and uh, we get the question, uh, what does 350 mean? Quite a bit. And, um, 350 has, is, just real quick, is the greenhouse gas concentration, carbon dioxide, and which scientists have told us that um, 350 parts per million is the safe um, place to be for, um, for our planet to keep a stable climate. And um, we just recently crossed 400 parts per million. So this is the reason why uh, our organization exists, and um, we are a local organization, San Diego 350, and, um, and so I wanted to tell you a little bit today to start off with um, the impacts here in San Diego. We'll have three parts of our presentation. And first, I want there's four or five really um, impacts. I'm sure everyone here is very well aware of that I just wanted to go over briefly. And then we'll go over our big um, impact that we had in a, a project recently. The first impact we have, um, of course, is drought. Um, in the San Diego Foundation Report of 2008, which synthesized, synthesized predictive data from our world-renowned scientists at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, UCSD and the SDSU, they predicted droughts from a hotter climate climate and San Diego by 2050, so only 35 years. And along with drought, related to drought, obviously we're in a, a huge a water, um, being in water shortages already in 2015. By 2050, San Diego County is projected to require 37% more water than we, com than we commonly do to increase population. Our major sources of water, the Colorado River, rivers, and in northern Colorado, and the Sierra snowpack could sh actually shrink by 20% due to increased warming. This is a, according to Richard Seeger of Columbia University who says, the term global warming does not do justice to the climatic changes the world will experience in the coming decades. Some of the worst disruptions we face will involve water, not just temperature. And I'm sure everyone in San Diego County has been deeply touched by wildfires. Here in San Diego County and throughout the West, we've already seen a large increase in wildfires. In 2003 and, and 2007, major damage was done burning 740,000 acres. What does global warming um, increase wildfire risk? A longer fire season due to earlier spring runoff more rapid heat buildup in the summer and warmer conditions in the fall. Also due to drier conditions, which causes more fuel for forest fires due to tree di die off from insect infestation. Furthermore, in areas where wildfires are projected to become more frequent, it's already more expensive and sometimes difficult to purchase fire insurance. And lastly, in the, um, in the impacts, 
that I'll cover is our, our human health. Climate change is already negatively affecting people's health, health, and this certainly will worsen in the future. Thousands of people have died in heat waves worldwide. Water and food-borne diseases, diseases carried by mosquitoes and rodents, and diseases caused by air pollution are all expected to rise. And many people have been affected by water and food shortages caused by the drought. So now I'd like to turn it over to Jean for the rest of our presentation. Okay, the main uh, focus <clears throat> of this part of the presentation is sea level rise. Uh, we have fabulous scientists in San Diego um, at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, UCSD, SDSU, and they have predicted that we are looking at a 12 to 18 inch sea level rise. Um, by 2050. So if you think about that, that's the next 35 years, about the length of a, a, a mortgage. Um, and it's not like it's just going to arrive at 2050. We're going to be experiencing this more and more. So um, one of the things that we wanted to do, um, we being, uh, we are a team of San Diego 350. We are the creative engagement team. And um, so what we try to do is we try to engage people and get them interested by using arts, um, visual, performing, and media <coughs> arts. Very concrete things that people can, um, that doesn't just appeal to somebody's mind, but actually tries to make them feel something, to feel the urgency of this threat that we're facing. So, we decided to do a high water line project. And what this is, is it's a concept that was originated by artist Eve Mosier. It's been done in New York City, Miami, Bristol, England, Philadelphia, and one other city whose name I can't remember right now, but um, basically it involves uh, chalk. Taking, figuring out where the line is that the tide is expected to come to and chalking that line so that people can see literally what we're talking about. Um, I'm gonna let you see, um, we, we got great coverage for this event that we did. And I'm gonna show you a news clip from it. We got five TV stations, and we also got um, three uh, print media outlets to cover our event. Certainly. Not to sea levels in San Diego. Some say the coast, as we know it, will be underwater in just 35 years. And today, activists tried to make that point. San Diego Citizens Nancy Aziz reports from Mission Beach with the group's message. Drawing the line in the sand, or rather on the sidewalk, environmentalists try to make their point. This will be underwater from water rising from the bay. The group San Diego 350 says by the year 2050, climate change will bring so much water to Mission Bay, it will cover from the bay to their chalk marks on the sidewalk on Mission Boulevard. These homes are all going to be damaged. There's going to be regular flooding. Elsewhere in San Diego, the group says ocean waters will rise some 12 to 18 inches in the next 35 years. La Jolla is going to be affected. The airport's going to be affected all of South Bay. The group collected signatures that plan to give them to the city council, demanding stronger environmental protection. Jonathan Sanders says the group crossed the line when they left a mess on the sidewalk outside his shop, all for something he's not so sure will happen. I really don't know what nature's going to do. I don't think that they know what nature's going to do. But the group says the predictions are based on research by the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, and they say we can redraw the line. We can drive us, we can bike, we can walk, we can take public transportation. We can put solar on our homes. We can use less water. Nancy Aziz, San Diego 6 News. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, I, for the next section of my talk, I'm going to need uh, two volunteers. Please? Anybody want to get up and stretch your legs and help me out? I'm going to.
All right. No, okay, great. Um, so, you might get a little dirty. So it's good you're wearing jeans. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, can you sit up here? I wouldn't sure if I still miss it, You are. Okay. Well, what we're going to do here is um, basically show you the implements of activism that we use. James is lifting out our famous chopper that you saw in the video. And um, I brought this so that we don't leave a big mess, because people did complain about that after we were there. Um, and, um, oh, can you also uh, pass these out? Um, can you get out the stencil as well? Okay. So what I want to ask the volunteers to do is to use our stencil and I wanted to invite everybody to just come and gather around and see what this leaves. This is what we put on the sidewalk. So it, it was right next to our line. So um, anyway, if, if you, sir, could just um, try to hold this really steady um, by putting like one hand here, one hand here. And if you can grab some uh, chalk out of here. Yeah, that's good. And then just spread it. And please feel free to come up and see what what um, what happens. So we're just gonna spread this. This is going to be a little bit messy, but um, this next part, just want to lift this as carefully as possible. So you can really see how, um, yeah, let's try not to shake that. You want to take this outside? Yeah, shake it off. Um, yeah, James, yeah, let's just say it. You can, you can see the kind of dramatic line that that makes. Um, I think that gets... Uh, people to pay more attention than if you just stand up there and talk to them. So, um, if you want to wipe your hands off, <laughs> um, that's what it's here for. I'm throwing it in the wash after. <laughs> this is creative engagement. All right. So, um, we also had sidewalk chalk, which was fun. I wish that you could see this a little more clearly. This is the southern half of um, Mission Beach. And as you can see, um, there, the, on the right-hand side is the bay, on the left-hand side is the seaside, and in the middle, where there's all that purple, that's where a bunch of businesses are and a bunch of houses. And the reason that it's colored purple is because that's where the flooding will take place. And um, so that's with predicted, predicted um, taking into account wave events, taking into account sea level rise of one to five inches. This map is directly from uh, that group of scientists that we talked about. So they're very concerned about this. They also um, talk about beaches shrinking, disappearing. Um, it's really hard for me to imagine that, but if you think about, say, that the beach loss that can happen on Mission Beach, um, you would be jumping into the water maybe from the wall that separates the boardwalk, <laughs> and that's just, and running into the wall, I mean, it's not safe to go swimming if you don't have a beach. So, um, and most streets will flood regularly at high tide, so. Just to give you an idea, this is a real picture, this is not photoshopped. This is what happens in Mission Beach when it rains. They already have a big problem. And um, here's another one. So these, these business owners are very concerned about what's going to happen. Um, and we were able to get a lot of uh, petition signatures for a strong climate action plan from them because of that. Now, just looking at a few other communities that have been identified as high risk because of sea level rise, uh, this one's Coronado. And this is a little bit of a different map. They use a different color scheme, and they did not take into account wave events at all. This is just the topography and um, sea level rise factored in. So 
there's a lot of risky areas there. The green areas and yellow areas, that's with one to two feet of sea level rise. Here's another area, this is South Bay. Um, as James said, I think, um, so Coronado, La Jolla Shores is also um, seen as, as a high risk area. So now that um, we've looked at this harrowing data and gotten all the press, let's talk about solutions. Um, I, I know that a lot of you are probably very conscious of many of the solutions, so I'm not even gonna go over some of the really basic ones like the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. I know you guys know that stuff. But I wanted to present maybe a few things that you hadn't heard so many times before. Greening your diet. Um, lamb, beef, and pork are some of the most um, greenhouse gas producing uh, livestock. Um, the, the whole thing of um, raising food for them, the whole thing of um, their interesting problem with belching, that kind of thing, um, creates a lot of greenhouse gases. Um, in fact, it creates, according to the United Nations, it creates 51% um, of our greenhouse gases actually come from livestock. So, another thing you can do is um, conserve water. And um, I know you've heard this one before. One way to conserve water, again, going back to the diet issue, I'm just learning about this stuff from people in my group. Um, skip eating a hamburger. You'll save 600 gallons of water by not eating one hamburger, okay? Well, maybe it's, it's one pound of meat that requires 660 gallons to produce. So if you just switch to something else further down on the diet, chicken, fish, um, or you know, go all plants, makes a big difference. Um, other things, uh, you can join us in some of the things that we're doing. We, we went up to Oakland and joined a bunch of other environmental organizations um, going up against fracking. Uh, we went to basically try to get Governor Brown to ban it. And we got 40 uh, high school students from King Chavez High who went with us and they got to have their voices heard and they haven't even graduated from high school yet. So that was pretty exciting. Another thing, um, I think you guys have this one covered, communicating with elected officials. Um, here, this is um, a picture of the People's Climate March, which we put on San Diego 350. We had 1,500 people. We did that in concert with the big People's Climate March that happened back in September. So here, are just a few more things you can do when you join with a group of people. And this, I love this slide. Um, so, People's Climate March in New York City, 400,000 people in the streets because they're concerned about climate. The organizers of this march were expecting 100,000, but about 400,000 people showed up. And um, apparently people at the back of the line of the march didn't move for two full hours because it was so congested there. So that's amazing. I'm really hopeful. And um, here's a little humor. We just got back from Alaska where we saw the cutest little glaciers. <laughs> so um, I hope that you will uh, feel interested in looking us up and um, the map that James passed out it has a fact sheet about sea level rise on the back. And that is um, a map that is slightly different from the one that I put up here. But it basically, you, if you read the legend, you can see that it just involves topography of that area and uh, sea level rise. Okay, so um, 
Also, just wanted to let you know, we have some handouts. We also have a sign-up sheet. If you want to get on a newsletter, we can send you a monthly newsletter. Just let us know. Thank you.